Imagine you are out one day doing a normal routine when suddenly you get a call. Your best friend died in a tragic car accident. How would you cope with having your life permanently changed in the blink of an eye? Give this video your focused attention for the next 10 minutes so you can become a more resilient person who can handle life's tragedies. This is a book summary of 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do by the psychotherapist Amy Marin. Let's get into thing one. Don't waste time feeling sorry for yourself. Imagine you break both your legs. You hop on the wheelchair and contemplate that you will be in this wheelchair for the rest of your life. How would you react? The reason people feel sorry for themselves when they find they're in a bad situation is because they are procrastinating. They do not want to face life struggles. They choose to believe that they don't have control over their circumstances and they play the victim card. The problem with feeling sorry for yourself is that it's a waste of time, it leads to more negative emotions, and it causes you to overlook the good in your life. To reduce feelings of self-pity, you need to change your behavior. To stop feeling sorry for yourself, volunteer to help a worthy cause. It's hard to feel sorry for yourself when you're serving hungry people in a soup kitchen or spending time with the elderly residents in a nursing home. And secondly, exchange self-pity for gratitude. Gratitude not only impacts your psychological health, but it can also affect your physical health. A study found that people who feel gratitude don't get sick as often as others. They have lower blood pressure and better immune systems. Thing two, don't give away your power. I want you to think about someone you dislike. Really picture it in your mind. How much time do you think about how much you dislike them? How much power does this person have over your mental energy? Giving other people the power to control how you think, feel, and behave makes it impossible to be mentally strong. The problems with giving away your power is that you depend on others to regulate your feelings, you let others define your self-worth, and you become sensitive to criticism. To take back your power, forgive people who have taken your power, and think before you react. If you tend to react negatively, take deep breaths and excuse yourself from the situation. Finally, evaluate feedback critically. Ask yourself, what evidence is there that this is true? Why might this person be giving me this feedback? Thing three, don't shy away from change. How well do you accept change? Are you able to change your habits, environment, or behavior when the need arises? Or will you stick to the same old routines because it feels familiar, even if it was bad for you? You tend to justify a bad habit by convincing yourself what you're doing isn't that bad. When you're in a bad situation, you worry that making a change might make things worse. The problem with shying away from change is that one, you won't learn new things, and two, the longer you wait, the harder it will get. So here's how to not shy away from change. You want to identify the pros and cons of changing. Create a list about the potentially good and bad outcomes of making a change. Thing four, don't focus on things you can't control. Trying to control everything starts as a way to manage anxiety. If you know you have everything under control, what's there to worry about? The problem with wasting energy on things you can't control is one, that you unnecessarily blame yourself for everything, and two, being a control freak damages relationships. Remember that the only thing you can control is your behavior and attitude. Thing five, don't worry about pleasing everyone. Do you say yes to nearly everything people ask of you? We try to please people because of two things fear, and learned behavior. People pleasers are afraid of conflict, therefore they try to avoid it by trying to make everyone happy. Sometimes the desire to avoid conflict stems from childhood. If you were raised by parents who were constantly arguing, you may have learned that conflict is bad and keeping people happy is the best way to prevent arguments. The problem with people pleasing is one that it damages relationships with people close to you. Imagine your friend asks you to go out for the day to watch a movie or play golf. But if you do that, your spouse will get angry because you two already made plans. In situations like these, people pleasers will sacrifice a relationship with the people closest to them to please others. And number two, you lose sight of your values. You'll stop doing what's right and only focus on making people happy, whether it's good or bad. To stop pleasing everyone, you must determine who you want to please. It's not your job to keep everyone happy. Thing six. Don't fear taking calculated risks. We avoid taking risks because emotion prevails over logic and we don't think about risks. 
Instead, we base our decisions on emotions or habits. Think back to a time when you made an impulsive decision. For example, buying something expensive you didn't need, or maybe you sent an embarrassing text to that woman you were obsessing over. In times like these, we need to restrain ourselves from making impulsive decisions. Give yourself time to think about the decision. Sleep on it. If it's an important decision, give yourself a week to think things through. The problem with fearing risk is that you won't be extraordinary without taking calculated risks. If we don't take risks, we are likely missing out on great opportunities. To reduce fear, you need to balance emotion with logic. Many passengers are so afraid of flying, they choose to drive long distances to get to a destination. Their decision to drive is based on emotion, not logic. There is only one in an 11 million chance that you will die in an aeroplane crash. However, there is a one in 5,000 chance that you will die in a car crash over the same distance. If you're going to take a risk, wouldn't you want the odds in your favor? Thing seven, don't dwell on the past. Do you think about all the things you should have done differently? Thinking about the past won't fix your problems. Guilt, shame, and anger are just a few of the feelings that can keep you stuck in the past. You might think, well, if I stay miserable long enough, I'll eventually be able to forgive myself. This won't work. The problem with dwelling on your past is that you miss out on the present and you can't prepare for the future. So to not dwell on the past, you need to shift your thinking. Give yourself something else to think about, like watching a 1% better video instead, or establish goals for the future. It's impossible to dwell on the past if you're planning for the future. Chapter eight, don't repeat your mistakes. We make the same mistakes due to being impulsive and stubborn. The problem with repeating mistakes is that you won't ever reach your goals and your friends and family may get tired of hearing you complain. So to avoid repeating mistakes, number one, you wanna study the mistake. Take some time to evaluate your mistake and figure out what went wrong. What could have you done better? And number two, create a plan. Be on the lookout for old behavior. Find a way to hold yourself accountable by keeping a journal. Thing nine, don't resent other people's success. Occasional jealousy is normal, but resentment is unhealthy. We resent other people's success because we want what they have. It could be a nicer car or a better house. The problem with resenting other people's success is that you will stop focusing on your own path to success, you will damage relationships and abandon your values. To stop resenting other people's success, focus on cooperation rather than competition. And number two, practice celebrating other people's accomplishments. Thing 10, don't give up after the first failure. You might have the feeling that if you fail once, you're most likely to fail again, so you don't bother trying again. Giving up after the first failure can become a bad habit. Each time you quit, you strengthen the idea that failure is bad, which will prevent you from trying again. To avoid giving up, change the way you think about failure. Here are some thoughts about failure that will likely discourage you from trying again. Failure is unacceptable. I'm either a complete success or a complete failure. Replace the irrational thoughts with these realistic reminders. Failure is often part of the journey to success and I can handle failure. Thing 11, don't fear alone time. You might think that spending time alone is a waste of time. You'd rather not think about your problems, so you distract yourself with work and other activities in your life. Here's what the research says are the benefits of alone time that you might be missing out on. Solitude at the office can increase productivity. This study found that most people in the study perform better when they had some privacy. To not fear solitude, you must practice tolerating silence. With practice, it will become easier. Use your alone time to write in a journal about your goals and feelings. And number two, meditate. Meditation has been linked to a variety of emotional benefits, including helping to reduce negative emotions. Thing 12, don't feel like the world owes you anything. We all want our fair share in life, but the idea that you're owed something just because of who you are or being a know-it-all can harm your career and personal life. We feel the world owes us something because social media fuels mistaken beliefs about self-importance and overindulgent parenting prevents children from learning how to accept responsibility for their behavior. The problem with the sense of entitlement is that you'll be less likely to work hard when you're busy complaining that you're not getting what you're owed. And when you don't get everything you want, entitlement can lead to feelings of bitterness as you'll think you were victimized. 
To not be entitled, develop self-awareness of your sense of entitlement. Look for thoughts such as, I'm not following that law because it's stupid. I'm more valuable than others. There's always been something really special about me. Thing 13. Don't expect immediate results. We expect immediate results because we underestimate how long change takes and we overestimate our abilities. The problem with expecting immediate results is that you may be tempted to take shortcuts. That leads to negative emotions when your expectations aren't met. To stop expecting immediate results, create realistic expectations and practice delaying gratification. Before we recap, know that I'm building 1%academy.com, which will have paid video courses to help you become 1% better. Let me know in the comments the number one problem you're having in life that you need the most help with. Let's recap. In today's video, you learned to not waste time feeling sorry for yourself, don't give away your power, don't shy away from change, don't focus on the things you can't change, don't worry about pleasing everyone, don't fear taking calculated risks, don't dwell on the past, don't repeat your mistakes, don't resent other people's success, don't give up after the first time, don't fear alone time, don't feel like the world owes you anything, and don't expect immediate results.